So what are you saying to yourself that's holding you back? Hi and welcome to this week's episode of Toolbox TV. This week I want to talk about the language that we use that tends to hold us back or programs us for either negativity or failure. Now, although I've just come from a meeting, which I'll talk about in a few minutes, although I've just come from a meeting with a young man who needs a lot of work in his mindset, this conversation actually stems from, or this, this uh, video stems from, a, a conversation at Mastermind this week where we were talking to one of the members about diary, about how they manage their diary and, and finding time. And it became blatantly clear that the language that's being used is what is creating the, uh, the issue of the problem. So let's lay it out. So this individual had a belief that they were working while on the tools. And anything outside of that was not classed as work. Now when I say they had a belief, I don't mean that they sat down consciously and said, you know what, if I'm not doing uh, quotes, I'm not working. However, it became abundantly clear from the language that they use, from the language that they use, so think about the, the language that you use and how you use it. So for example, I work from nine till five. Then I do my quotes and I do my paperwork. I work from nine to five, then I do my quotes and I do my paperwork. And I try and find time for marketing and everything. That's programming your mind to believe that you're only working when you've got tools in your hand, when you're actually out there physically doing the work. Uh, it's subtle, but it's a fact. So your mind gets programmed to say, all right, nine to five, I work, as in I have tools in my hand. And if I'm not doing something with tools in my hand, then I should be feeling a little bit guilty or I should be feeling that something's not right or something's wrong. Truth of the matter is, guys, your marketing is work. Doing your quotes is work. Doing your banking is work. This is all the work of running your business. But if you are telling your brain, if you are programming your mind to believe that this is not work, then you're setting yourself up for working stupid hours because you'll work, in inverted commas, up to five, six o'clock in the evening, and then, then you fill your time doing your quotes, your paperwork, and so on and so forth. Look, the answer to that is simply, uh, and you can look the video up online, but the answer to that is simply to use the uh, the marketing diary, the, what we call the, um, the doctor's receptionist diary, and follow that rigidly. You can create time for all sorts of things when you follow a structure like that. However, that's not the point of this of this video. This video is about the language that you use. Because if you're telling yourself, and, and you know, from what I could see, the person we were talking to had a bit of an aha moment. If you're programming yourself and you're telling yourself certain things, your brain will believe those. And here's the other thing. When your brain then gets support from other people, when it when they agree with you, then it ingrains that and it becomes a program that you run over and over and over again. And the best example of that one is, for example, what do we tell ourselves about pricing? We tell ourselves our customers won't have that. Whatever that is, you know, I'm going to put my prices, I want you to put your price up to 65 quid now. Oh, my customers won't have that. They won't pay that. You're telling yourself that. You haven't even asked your bloody customers. You tell yourself that. But then when you put it out, you put your feelers out and you go to your local friends and your family and then you say, oh, I'm thinking about charging 65 pound an hour. And they go, ooh, that's a bit expensive. Ooh, now your brain is getting ingrained, isn't it? Now it's being programmed. It's not just you telling yourself, but you've now got validation, you've got support, you've got people saying to you, it's, it, you can't do it. They don't run your business. They don't own your business. Think about the words you're using. And some of the other incidents that I come across, um, and again, a very simple one, and it means talking about leaflets again, but a very, very simple one is when you talk to people about doing leaflets, for example, and they say, no, 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 I've tried those and they don't work. So what they've been doing is they've been telling themselves a story that because they tried it once, it doesn't work. It's not that because I tried it a certain way it doesn't work or because I tried it in a certain area it doesn't work. No, 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 no. I tried leaflets and leaflets don't work. Now, here's the rub. 
they then talk to their uh, their mate, the plumber or the painter, and he goes, yeah, 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 I tried lifters as well, and it didn't work for me. Oh, validation. Then they go on to a, a Facebook group or a Facebook forum where there's three or four other guys saying, yeah, yeah don't try leaflets. Leaflets are a waste of money. That's, now I've got even more validation. Now I am programmed to believe that leaflets don't work. So now comes along me or somebody else that says, you know what, you need to try leaflets. Now I can't try leaflets because leaflets don't work. Leaflets are crap. I know they don't work because I tried it and it didn't work. And my mate the painter, he tried it and it didn't work. And my mate the plumber, he tried it and it didn't work. And then there's all these guys on this Facebook group and they know it don't work as well. So it doesn't work. So let's not talk about leaflets. And yet when I convince them and encourage them to try it and do it a different way and they get success from it, now all of a sudden it does work. But the resistance was because of the program that they're running in their brain. The resistance, which they could have got over a lot earlier and a lot easier, is because of the stories that they're telling themselves and the false validation that they're picking up elsewhere. And this is exactly the same with your pricing. It's exactly the same thing when you're telling yourself, oh, I can't possibly do that. But then you go and you seek validation from people who will agree with your outcome. They'll agree with what you are saying. Why? Because they don't want to hurt your feelings. They don't want to upset you. And they can tell from your body language, which is why these things don't work. Why is it one person can put their price up to £95 uh, as a minimum charge and have absolutely no problem and no resistance or very minimal resistance and somebody else can put it up to £95 and not get one uptake? People say, no, 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 it's too expensive. I'm going elsewhere. Why does that happen? That happens because what comes out of your mouth is not congruent with your body language, with your tonality. It's because you have told yourself, my customers won't have this. Therefore, you've programmed your brain, you've programmed your body language to react in a way that disassociates what you're saying from how you're acting. And because of that, because you don't believe it, your customers don't think you're worth it. That's the truth, that is the bottom line. Because you don't believe it, your customers pick up on that and they don't value what it is you do. And that's the only reason why one person in the same freaking area, one person can go out and charge 95 pound an hour and get no resistance or a little resistance and somebody else can go out and charge 95 pound an hour and not get it. The second person has told themselves a story. They have programmed their mind. And we're doing this with the type of customers that we work with. We're doing this with our rates. We're doing this with our managing our diary and our time. Um, there's a whole range of things that we are doing. Uh, I said I'd talk about the meeting. I've just been to a, a meeting with a young chap who wants to come out of employment and start his own business. And his business is, is a good, solid idea. But he has this story running in his head. He has this program running in his head that tells him he's not good enough. He's not good enough to do this. Why would people buy his service? Why would people want to work with him? And you know what? He has all the friends in the world who are telling him, oh, maybe you should hold off. Maybe now's not the time. Maybe you, uh, maybe you need a little bit more experience. Maybe this, maybe that. And then the thing is, hey, they're not trying to sabotage him intentionally. They think they're doing it from love. They think they're helping him. That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to help him. They're trying to ease the blow. You know, if you don't do it and you don't get upset, then everything will be okay. Stick with the status quo. That's where they're coming from. But the truth is they're validating the story he's telling himself in his head. And he's telling himself a story that is, why would people buy from me? Why, would I, why should I do this? I'm not experienced enough. I don't have enough knowledge. Therefore, uh, I shouldn't do this. And yet, he has the knowledge, he has the ability, he just needs to get his mindset straight. So what, what is it? What are the words, what are the stories you're telling yourself? If you really and truly sat down now, what are the stories that you're telling yourself? What are the words that you use to describe yourself? You know, do you, do you describe yourself as a business owner or do you describe yourself as an electrician? Well, what is it, you know? And what's the difference? How does that impact or how does that affect how you do business? How does that affect how you operate, how you run things? You know, do you tell yourself, oh, I could never push my prices past 65 pound or past 75 pound. I could never do that because my customers would never put up with that. This area wouldn't warrant it, it wouldn't stand it. Yeah? Do you tell yourself those kind of stories? Do you tell yourself, I don't have enough time in the day? 
yeah? I don't have enough time in the day. You program your mind to believe that, then it's true. You have the same amount of time as uh, as I have. You have the same amount of time as Richard Branson has. You have the same amount of time as Elon Musk has. You have the same amount of time as Jerry Mullins has. So, what do you mean you don't have enough time in the day? You program yourself to believe it, then you believe, oh, I can only get a certain amount done because I don't have enough time in the day. Use different words, use better words to describe you, what you do, what your business is, what you're all about. And you'll see a change in the business. Look, talk to any of the guys who have gotten over the barrier of, of price. Talk to any of those. They will tell you the one thing, the one thing that has made the difference is that they believe in themselves, that they, they have the confidence to carry out uh, the, the, the words and say, that would be a minimum charge of £95. That would be a minimum charge of £125. That is about programming yourself and your language and your body and your actions to be congruent with the what you're saying. So guys, watch what your watch your language. There you go. I wasn't even thinking about saying that, but watch your language because it, it matters. It, it alters the way you think. So until the next time, continue to learn and grow, and I'll see you in the next video.